Hey friends, it's Jen. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. Today I am going to be doing a first trimester recap. I've been running most of my life, blowing smoke everywhere around. I've been searching. Okay, so right now I am 15 weeks pregnant. Technically, have been in my second trimester for a week now, so I can give you a little bit of a sense of how that last week has been. But I want to go back to the very beginning when I found out. I shared that video with you guys, and that was March 2nd. I was actually less than four weeks pregnant at the time. I was super early on. I found out right away. If you saw the video, you could see how faint the line was at first. And that meant a lot, a lot of waiting. I called uh, a few days after I found out to set up my first appointment. And it wasn't until eight and a half weeks. So it was going to be on April 9th, which was, you know, over a month wait. And I thought that was the longest wait. And it was, it really felt like a really long time. Of course, as you all know, what's coming soon in this story is the quarantine order and just chaos ensuing. March 2nd, life was pretty normal. You know, we started to get like feelings that maybe we were gonna have some kind of issues here. Maybe we were going to work from home potentially, or be more cautious, wear masks. It was all very much up in the air. Like no one really knew what to expect on March 2nd. But by March 12th, so just 10 days later, I remember requesting to work from home for the foreseeable future. And then just a couple of days later, everybody at my work was, was called home. And I was, five weeks at the time, five weeks pregnant. I hadn't really told anybody yet except for a couple close friends um, and my sister and Chris, of course. And it just felt so bizarre to be kind of keeping this really huge secret, this big life event. But then also everybody's attention is fixated on coronavirus and I didn't know where to focus my attention. And it was, it was a very strange experience. I, it, all, it just felt like surreal. Everything felt surreal. And I'm sure everybody felt like the quarantine and life didn't feel the same at all. And it's not the same. It's still not the same. Not even close. But add on that, being newly pregnant and keeping this secret and just trying to cope with the fact that you don't know when life's going to be back to normal and you have all these anxieties already about bringing a baby into the world and what is life going to look like and the financial situation and childcare and all of that. And then you think, oh, and there's this virus and we don't know how that's going to affect our jobs and our finances and this world. <laughs> Let's just say there was a lot of anxiety and stress that I had to work through and deal with in those early weeks. As far as symptoms go in those early weeks, I felt pretty much normal. My skin was super clear. I felt very stable emotionally. I feel like for me, pregnancy has made my emotions very like stable. I've been able to cope really well with things. I've been able to be really patient and calm. That is not always the case for me. So I'm really grateful for that because I've really needed that. As we'll get into, there's been some, some struggles in the past, in the past few months. I noticed when I was five and a half weeks pregnant, we went out and we got um, pizza at our favorite vegan pizza place. 
But I remember we, we ordered pizza and I love this pizza place. We both love it. And we ordered um, vegan wings, which might sound weird to you guys who, who aren't vegan, but they're delicious. Very, very, very delicious. And we sat down to eat and I, I had a couple wings and I had a piece of pizza and then I was just like not interested in the rest. And I had my leftover pieces and they just sat in the fridge for like days and I just didn't want to eat them. And that was the first taste of like pregnancy symptoms really for me is that like mild food aversion where things I normally like suddenly were not appealing to me. And quickly, probably a week later from that, I didn't want to eat anything, nothing, nothing sounded good. My appetite was, ugh. I forced myself to eat because if I didn't eat, I felt awful, but I didn't want to eat anything. And it pretty much was surviving off of things like toast, um, popsicles, crackers, smoothies, like naked juice smoothies. I couldn't even make a smoothie. I would have to get like a prepackaged one that had a very specific flavor or else I didn't want it. Juices. I was extremely picky and I couldn't do anything about it. I just had to, just had to continue to eat what I could and wait it out. Fun fact about this time and my entire pregnancy is my intolerance to gluten has mostly just disappeared. I used to get really weird symptoms when I would eat gluten, like um, inflammation in my neck and like muscle pain and twitches and all this bizarre stuff. And it's just gone away when I'm pregnant. So it's been amazing because I've been so picky. I've been able to eat like all different kinds of breads and which makes being, you know, vegan and eating out so much easier. It also makes my pregnancy cravings way better. In those weeks, like six to eight, that was pretty much it. Every day, didn't really want to eat anything, forced myself to eat, never threw up, not even once, but I would have a trash can nearby just in case because I did feel nauseous. It just wasn't, it wasn't anything bad. But the food aversions and just that this like gross feeling of being unwell was really intense at times. And sometimes I would just lay on the couch and just like want to cry because it was so rough. Um, but I am really grateful because I know for some people it can be really, really intense. The other thing was anything Chris ate that had a strong smell or that looked gross to me, I like didn't want to be near him. I would like move away on the couch or move in a different chair and just look at him with distaste because it smelled weird. Also, I started smelling bad. Like my body odor started to stink more. And I started noticing it when I would wake up in the morning. So I'd have to like shower. I'd have to change more often, things like that. Another just bizarre, a bizarre symptom. The biggest thing for me in the first trimester around, I want to say it started around five and a half weeks. I started to have asthma and coughing and um, excessive like phlegm buildup in my throat. And at first I attributed it to allergies or seasonal asthma, which I've had before, mildly. And so I would just use my inhaler, my rescue inhaler. And then I found myself needing my inhaler like three or four times a day. And you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to really only need it like maybe a couple times a week. And I started to get worried. Um, this was right around the time where, you know, everybody's freaking out like about COVID. And of course, that's still the case. But, you know, one of the big symptoms is like shortness of breath and um, coughing. And I'm having like tons of shortness of breath. I'm having tons of dry coughing. And I have like no appetite and, you know, all of those things. And I was so, so confused. Like, is this pregnancy? Is this seasonal allergies? Do I have like coronavirus? And it went on and it went on and it got really, really bad to the point where I, th I started to develop like bronchitis from all the phlegm, from all the coughing. And I would be up all night long coughing. I would need my inhaler all the time. I suddenly, you know, I got an appointment with my doctor. At first they thought it might be acid reflux issues from being pregnant and the acid was causing me to have like phlegm. And so they prescribed me with an acid reducer. I didn't do anything, so I got I got an emergency visit in with my doctor because it was so so bad. I was I woke up one morning and just started crying, like sobbing because I was so just devastated how hard it had been to sleep, how hard it had been just to function because 
I wasn't breathing super well. I was coughing all the time. I couldn't, I couldn't even go on a walk without having asthma. Every time I ate, I would have asthma. And so I got a visit in, you know, last minute, but it was super hard because all the doctors were just swamped with visits because it's, you know, right in the middle of the coronavirus. And they prescribed me with a medication for asthma, but it's, um, it's more of a preventative than a reactive medication. Um, it's called Pomagort or like Budesonine. So I got prescribed that and it was immediate relief, like immediate. So I tried the first night I used it, I felt like 60% like better. I still like really felt, you know, the phlegm and all of that. And I still had to use my, my rescue inhaler two or three times a day, but it was so much better. And at this point I was probably eight or nine weeks pregnant, which was when I was supposed to have my first appointment. Um, I was so excited for that appointment. It was going to be our first ultrasound. This was going to come with me, you know, and we're going to see the baby for the first time. We're going to hear the little baby's heartbeat, make sure everything was okay. And I was going to tell Chris's family that we were expecting um, through a birthday brunch on Chris's birthday, which happened to be Easter, like that following weekend. So I was super excited. I had all this planned out for weeks. And I think it was like, you know, mid-March and we started to realize, I don't think things are going to get better. His mom and sister are both nurses. So they have contact with a lot more people than we do. So we just knew like we needed to, you know, avoid contact. We couldn't have people in our home. And so um, that was really hard. I knew that, I knew that wasn't going to happen, but I was still hoping, you know, maybe, maybe after the first ultrasound, we can like Skype them and show them the ultrasound and announce it. And I was, I think, seven weeks pregnant when I got a call from my doctor. And she said, or it was, it was the nurse or secretary. It wasn't, it wasn't the doctor. She's like, we want to push back your appointment three weeks. And I just like, I went upstairs and I told Chris and I was really very disappointed. Just deflated. That day, actually. His mom came over to drop off toilet paper because we were out of toilet paper and she had she had some extra. And she came in the driveway and we were like social distancing. So she's like probably like 10 feet away from me. And I throw her, I throw her a onesie and told her. We got, got something for you too. <gasps> you can't do that to me! I can't help you! I, but wait, that's a tissue. <laughs> Well, yeah. just air hugs. I know we figured we were gonna be able to see you guys for a long time yeah. in person now. So, but I'm almost seven weeks. Congratulations! <laughs> After that, I just decided let's just tell all of our families we were seven weeks pregnant. We weren't gonna, you know, make sure everything was okay until like 12 weeks. I didn't want to wait that long. I was, I was just overweighting. So we told our families. We told my family. We told Chris's family. Around, I would say eight and a half weeks. We decided to purchase a um, at-home like fetal Doppler because, you know, I'd heard that around nine weeks you can potentially hear the baby's heartbeat. I just said, let's just give it a try. Let's see if we, you know, if we can find the baby's heartbeat. So we tried it out. It took a while. And then we heard the, the heartbeat for the first time. I just remember being shocked. That's, that's our baby. Eight weeks, six days, we heard the heartbeat for the first time. And then we had, of course, like three more weeks until our first appointment. But I felt so much better. I would say nine weeks, my nausea subsided a lot. I didn't really deal with morning sickness anymore unless I hadn't eaten and needed a little snack. But the food aversions were still incredibly strong. I'm really, really, really picky eater, which is not normal for me. I was mostly eating toast peanut and rice burritos from Taco Bell and obsessed with hot chips. This one brand called Siete has these like vegan gluten-free like spicy chips and obsessed with those. Sometimes I crave veggie sushi. I had like random cravings. So basically in the early days it was like I didn't want anything except for what I did want. I wanted and I really wanted it now and 
it was different every single day and different by the hour. So I would want it like at five, but by seven, it sounded disgusting. But spicy and sour things definitely were a trend, things that I wanted, um, still, still really love. 11 weeks rolls around and I actually started to feel, I felt the baby for the first time somewhere between 10 and 11 weeks. I know I'm going to get tons of comments saying that that's not possible, but it, it, it just, it, it was, it's, it's what it was. Um, and the reason I know is because it was right where we had found the baby on the Doppler and it was just the most unusual feeling. I'd never felt that before. It was not like gas. It did not feel like bubbles or anything like that. It felt like I was being tickled on the inside. I know I'm going to get people who totally doubt it and that's fine. I know what happened. After that, I would feel like maybe like once a week. And then this week I've felt it a lot more, at least like a few times every day, like flutters and stuff like that. So let's talk about that first appointment. It was like 8 a.m. I had to wear a mask. I had to get screened for a fever when I got there and Chris was not allowed to come. They had told me that I would be able to FaceTime him and that I would be able to record the ultrasound while I was there. So I was really looking forward to that. But I was, I mean, we were really disappointed that he couldn't come with me to my first ultrasound. The nurse comes over with her mask on and checks my temperature and it was fine. I never ran a fever or anything like that. But it was just not what you expect. Not what you expect when you go to any doctor's office. Certainly not what you expect when you go to have your first ultrasound. You know, I pull out my phone to start recording and, you know, getting ready to FaceTime Chris and she goes, oh, we, you can't record. You can't, you can't record. Like, that's, it's not allowed. And I told her, they, you know, they told me I could record. They told me I could FaceTime my husband because he can't be here. And, and she's like, nope, you can't do either of those things. That was very disappointing. But she, she was really nice. And I could tell it's not what she wanted to say. And it wasn't a rule that she had decided on. And so she said to me, she's like, okay, well, you know, if I'm not looking, I can just pretend like I don't see. And so I didn't FaceTime him because I didn't want to you know, push that too much, but I did record a little bit of the ultrasound. So she puts like the gel in your belly and puts the little wand on and she tells me, you know, first we're gonna look and make sure everything's in the right location. We're just gonna check a couple things and then we'll look at your little, you know, little sweet pea or whatever she said. You could see immediately, it's like a baby. I remember saying like, oh my gosh, it's like an actual baby. Cause it, it didn't look like a blob or like a gummy bear. It looked like a baby, you know, with head and arms and feet and little hands and, at your cervix and we'll zoom up on your little peanut right here. Oh, it looks like an that. actual baby. <laughs> it's okay, oh my baby. gosh. Oh, it's so cute. We're doing some jumps. Oh yeah, I'm moving around. Oh yeah. Oh. Jumps. It's so <laughs> unbelievable. It so looks like a baby. It's so crazy. Oh. <laughs> I was so surprised. Not only that, but the baby was moving all over the place. I mean, like jumping off my uterus walls and turning over and waving its hands and, and just so active. She kept saying like it was a little jumping bean and everything was great. I mean, the baby looked great. There was no issues. So that was an amazing experience. Very surreal. Even though I saw the baby, it's still, I still actually haven't made the connection that that baby's like inside of me and growing inside me. I think the hardest part was, one, I hadn't shared it with you guys yet. I didn't share it until um, close to 14 weeks. For those I did share it with, nobody understood my, you know, asthma and allergy and phlegm related issues. Like nobody understood it. And everybody was like, oh, that's, that's so weird. And it just felt very isolating to be experiencing something that was really intense and really hard and having nobody like get it. The bright side is now that I'm 15 weeks, I'm in the second trimester, I'm able to eat more foods, feeling so much better. I haven't really used my inhaler more than a handful of times this week. Being outside has helped so much, being in the fresh air, working in the garden, and now I just feel like I'm in such a good place, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, everything, that um, I can just be happy. Just feel good. That's my first trimester. Before we wrap up this video, I'm also gonna show you guys my 
15 week bump. So you can't really tell a lot when I'm wearing this kind of like loose shirt. So I'll like lift up my shirt so you guys can see. But here is the status of the bump. A little bit, a little bit there. It's so especially obvious after I eat a large meal. First signs of a little bump, baby sprout <laughs> right in here. And it will continue to grow, obviously, to happen when you're pregnant. <laughs>